Fiber. So we are now at Tech Yes City, finally on Fiber to the Premise, AKA FTTP. And this is much better than the technology we had here before, which was FTTN, which essentially is still running copper to your house through an old telephone line. And the speeds were horrendously bad to the point where I had max 10 megabits per second upload. And if you guys are uploading YouTube videos, you're gonna know how much of a pain having slow upload speeds are. So right now in Australia, they're rolling out a free upgrade to fiber to your house where they'll come and install it as well. And you can get that if you sign up to select MBN providers on a six month contract, which is extremely reasonable considering the quotes that I got for fiber upgrade before that. I think I got a quote that ranged up to around $25,000. So it was extremely shocking when I saw that how much it would cost to upgrade your house to fiber, but now they're rolling it out for free. And that's really good news because you can get your internet upgraded to, in this case, we got over 10 times the download speeds and roughly five times faster upload speed. Though in today's video, we're going to get into a lot of the headaches I came up into uh, setting up my uh, fiber at the house where me and dad man actually had to run a whole new cable through the roof, which the MBN, that's the National Broadband Network people in Australia, would not install for us because they don't want to uh, rip any of your plasterboard up and do that. So that's on you. If you guys have to run new cables and you want them in the walls, I would suggest getting that done yourself before they come over. So let's explain this whole process, all the uh, things to be careful of, all the hiccups and all ultimately the reward in the end, if it's worth it, right up to today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in the description below. So if you guys wanna get fiber installed to your household or wherever you are, you can actually just go to the MBN website itself and check if you are eligible for a fiber upgrade. In fact, a lot of different websites that are offered advertising these plans will actually allow you to check your address and see if you're eligible for the free upgrade. In this case, when I got back to Australia, I quickly checked. I was like, okay, sweet, eligible for the free upgrade. I'm gonna take this as soon as possible. They then contracted the MBN guys to come out. And what I didn't know was they actually come out and just do the install that day if they can. I thought it was just they initially come out, check out the job and see if they can do it or not. And that's what I was sort of told on the phone. So there was a bit of confusion there, but if you book it, they're actually gonna come out for their day and install it for you. And they'll get the job done on the first day if you're happy with them running conduit. But in this case, the uh, fiber cable that they brought out had to go through concrete. And then we had to actually lift up plasterboard in order to get to a hole that would go through the concrete. Because what the MBN guys who are installing the fiber, what they're not going to do is they're not going to rip up your walls. They are not going to uh, jackhammer holes through your concrete when it comes to installing uh, fiber through the garage, for instance, to your house. But they will, in this case, um, put a hole in the wall and to get the fiber through the garage and what they need to do as a basic sense, but they won't do any sort of um, <laughs> renovations on your house. So that's something to be careful of and not expect them to do that as well because they just simply cannot do that due to some uh, p potential backlash in the future. So in this case, they came over the first day, they got the box installed outside, they left us with the fiber cable and they also left us with a really handy tool to run fiber through a um, roof, uh, through the roof. It's one of these little bendable things that you can attach the cable to and pull the whole uh, thing through. Without that, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Uh, but what me and dad man did is we actually put four holes in the roof and then firstly ran a conduit through. And then after that, we attached the uh, cable to the steel ring thing that they gave us and then we pulled that through the conduit and then the after that the fiber cable was ready to go so then they rescheduled for another day they came back and they finished the job and the speeds were a lot better and in fact this is going to allow me to do a lot more content here at tech yes city especially when it comes to downloading new games which are just getting so big nowadays uh, for instance i downloaded a game the other day i think it was uh, starfield and that was near 100 gigabytes 
And that actually on this new internet didn't take so long. So if I'm doing a budget PC and I'm showing what it can play, then this internet is actually uh, invaluable in terms of saving a lot of time here at the studio. So really grateful for the upgrade. But another thing is too, the prices of the higher speed tiers have actually come down significantly. So in Australia, you can get like a thousand down now for um, around a hundred dollars Aussie a month, which would be around a current exchange rates around 60 US dollars a month. And so that's not bad at all considering this kind of speed tier would have been a few years ago, easily over $150. So the prices are definitely getting more competitive and that's great to see. But also this free fiber upgrade to your house is extremely worth it in terms of taking advantage of it. If you are in a house, especially that you're living in for the foreseeable future, I would definitely recommend getting the fiber upgrade. However, as we said before, if you're having to get installation done, do um, make sure that you've got a plan sort of for where the box is going to run to. And if you need to pull up walls or anything like that, I would sort that out with the MBN guys when they come over the first day because they're happy to come back a second time too. So don't sweat it if they come the first time and there's a problem, they'll definitely tell you what to do and what to get done then they'll come back again and finish the install off. So that was really good, uh, really straightforward in terms of getting it all done. But there was another problem that we came into after we got the internet activated, and that was actually with our router. So I've got this DSL 5300 router here from D-Link. And initially I installed the um, router, set it up. Everything was actually working. I just changed the username and password, and the internet was then working to the highest speed tier. But then the guy was on the phone. He was asking me, okay, uh, I, we recommend you update the firmware on your, uh, your router and then you uh, reboot uh, your whole router and then do everything from the start. So I did this. And actually we came into a, a problem after we did this where the PlayStation 5, my brother's PlayStation 5, um, when he tested that, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't connect to the router or get internet anymore after that. So then I had to go through all the settings and it ended up being a really annoying setting that I changed because I must have changed this thing years ago with the DSL 5300. And that was, I had this issue where I had to change the IP range from, instead of it being default from 100 to 200 at the end, I had to change it from 0.1, uh, 0.2, sorry, because the router actually takes up a 192.168.1.1 uh, base. I changed that from dot two to then 200 so the playstation actually miraculously worked fine after that so it must be with sony um, auto uh, configuring ip addresses where it likes maybe an ip address under 100 i don't know but after i did that setting reset the uh, router uh, everything worked fine even then before that i was resetting the router we tried <laughs> rebooting it dozens of times just pulling our hairs out on what settings would cause this and it actually ended up being that setting that fixed it all in the end. There was also another setting as well with um, Wi-Fi in this DSL 5300 where I turned off five gigahertz bands and just left the 2.4 gigahertz on with the roaming assist and that um, fixed any dropouts on the Wi-Fi network at my studio. And then I think the final thing we did was the username and password with Fiber is you just go to the IPv4 tab on your router put your username and password in. And this is what I suggest doing from the get-go only, is if everything works before this, just put your new username and password in. Don't bother with any of the refreshing the router and all that stuff, because in this case, we had the internet working perfectly. Then the technician um, from the actual ISP heavily recommended rebooting your whole uh, router and modem again, because I was actually complaining about my upload speeds not being at that full advertised 50 that I was paying for. And in this case, I'm with a company called Exitel and the downloads are extremely good. They're actually going over 500 megabits down, which the plan I got was 500 down and 50 up, but they're definitely throttling the upload speeds. And so the technician was like, oh, reset your whole modem, do this and do that. And I did that and the upload speeds are still the same. They're still under 50. They're like around 35 megabits per second. So I do want to um, get better upload speeds. So that's the main reason why I got the 50 up on that plan instead of, anyway, ran aside, FTTP guys, I heavily recommend it. I do, um, I would say it's 
it's easily worth it in Australia because the, the speed differences between the copper telephone line and the fiber to the premise is just night and day. Huge difference. And I'll be glad to get you guys much better content coming in the future and much more of it without being hindered by internet now. So that's going to be a big plus and you're definitely going to extract a lot of value out of it. Of course, if you have any other questions or comments about setting up uh, fiber, uh, anything, especially if you're in Australia with the FTTP and stuff like that, I've done another video in the past explaining the differences between FTTN, FTTB and FTTP, for example. I'll put the link up to for that video right here. But if you've got any uh, questions about construction or anything with the MBN guys, then do drop a comment down below. But they're really cool. All the MBN guys that came around, they were all really easy going, easy to get along with. So um, do be patient. If you've got something, sort of some difference of opinion with them, just understand that they're doing a job and they're contracted to do a job. So there's things that they can and can't do. And just understand that. Don't expect them to rip up your plasterboard or anything like that because they just won't do that. Anyway, guys, with all that aside, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And we've also got the question of the day here, which comes from STW Jones Hotmail. Uh, can you use a power supply bought from Japan in Australia? I thought the voltage is very different. And the answer to this is yes, you can, especially if the power supply has the transformer there for 100 volt to say, for instance, 240 volt. I know that's a typical range. And so in Australia, we use a over 200 volt here. And in Japan, they use 100 volt. So the power supply works in both Japan and Australia. However, that being said, there are some power supplies in Japan that only work at 100 volt. And so I, I don't bring them back to Australia. It's not worth it. But in the, in the case of the ones that do have that uh, multi-voltage range in terms of input, I do bring them back because they work fine in Australia as well. Anyhow, guys, I hope that answers that question. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you enjoyed the video this far and you enjoy that tech yes content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. I'll catch you on another one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.